Lakers I got no time in my life. I love everyone. What's going on, you crazy bastards? You're back here with Rob Kimball from SonsOfWrestling.com for a TNA Bound for Glory review. And this takes place in Tokyo, Japan. And uh, so we get a little bit of the Russell One guys going on. So it's, a, it's like a mix of two promotions and we have a TNA Hall of Fame induction ceremony with Team 3D, which is really, really cool. They deserve it. And uh, well, let's start it off with Manic versus Tanaka. Now, this is a really, really good match. And uh, Tama Tanaka's moonsault off the fucking apron outside of the ring was awesome. And let me tell you what, this crowd, for being in Japan, <laughs> they know a lot of U.S. chants, and we get the TNA, TNA, TNA. And like I said, they know a lot of chants, so down the road I'm going to repeat some as we go on. And, um, well, man, it comes back with a frog splash, but Tanaka gets a knees up, and then um, he hits a brain buster, and Tanaka kicks out of that after uh, Sonata, or Manic nails the brain buster, which was, hey, no Austin Aries, why not? Let's use it. <laughs> so, yep, and um, anyway, Tanaka's kicking out of everything, pretty much, and these guys are just going back and forth, back and forth, but in the end, you get the, the, the Manaru special, and that makes fucking Manic tap, and that's that. So Tanaka picks up the victory here at Bound for Glory 2014, and we move on to EC3, speaking backstage, and uh, he's talking about how he's undefeated his first year, year one, undefeated. So he's going to go on to year two. Maybe uh, some aspirations that may be golden. Hey, there's an idea right there for the big guy. So we move on to EC3 versus Hama. Ham, slam, slam, ham. And EC3's going on and on. And anyway, oh, Jesus Christ, EC3 eats a face full of ham. <laughs> Giant ass. Holy shit. Hammer there is a big fella. Tipping 500 pounds. Holy shit. Oh, anyway, anyway, EC3 said he was going to slam him. He could not get him up. So, in the end, we do get EC3 nailing the one percenter to Hama for the victory. Still undefeated, still a beast, and EC3 also has a new uh, associate partner, whatever, he will be introducing on Wednesday on Impact Wrestling. Can't wait to see who it is, I'm not sure. I am barely a spoiler reader ever so I really don't know who it is can't wait and I will wait so cuz why not it doesn't hurt to not fucking know now I'll, I'll find out later anyway MVP versus Sakamoto and um, outside of the ring we get this monster fucking boot to Sakamoto from MVP into the fucking barrier. The crowd is insane. The crowd is hot. And I really, really liked MVP's speech before this. His little backstage segment about fucking pro wrestling and how he loves it. And it's an art form. Yes, it is. Before it became entertainment, it's a fucking pro wrestling art form. Yes, MVP. Yeah, you may be hated on TNA Impact Wrestling because you're playing the heel, but tonight you killed it. Definitely. So during this match, ah, oh, just really, really good shit. In the end, MVP hits a shiny wizard for the win against Sakamoto. Sakamoto was the uh, old manager of Lord Tensai, which used to get his ass just tossed around when Tensai was pissed off, which was strange. But anyway, uh, Sakamoto here, actually, you seen some of the talent that I actually had where in the WWE you didn't see none of it. They just beat his ass. And finally we move on to the X Division Championship match. We have Loki versus Kaz 
Hayashi versus Samoa Joe and the crowd is on fire for Samoa Joe. Yes, they are. Insanely pumped for him. And oh man, fucking Hayashi fucking does this catapult to Loki, but Loki catches it, comes back off the middle ropes for a double foot stomp. That was badass. Killer spot. Um, then we get a suicide dive by Samoa Joe to both Hayashi and Loki, and that was the ticket to get the crowd insane. That was killer. Uh, anyway, in the end here, you have, uh, I, I couldn't believe that he did it. Loki gets Samoa Joe up onto his shoulders for some kind of maneuver that he's about to attempt, but he couldn't because Samoa Joe starts dropping the elbows to the head, slips behind, and locks in the Coquina Clutch. And Loki is such a badass, he will not tap. He just passes the fuck out. And the ref calls it. Samoa Joe, still your X Division champion. And the crowd loves it. And uh, Samoa Joe, well, the man can speak some Japanese and really lights up the crowd with some of the things that he has to say that I don't know what he said. But anyway, I'm pretty sure it's all respectful words. And he went over big time. And this was a really good match. So if you haven't watched it, go watch it. God damn it. Really good shit. Then we have um, a Wrestle 1 tag team and uh, two tag teams from Wrestle 1. I, sorry guys, I really don't know any of them, but from watching the match, Pantera, clearly the guy. Badass, really good. The other dude with the blazer, Wrestling in the blazer in the end he does hit a fucking swanton outside of the ring. That was pretty cool And but fucking with his hair way too much the blazer still on I don't know It's like a Tyler Breeze the deal in Japan. So hey, it's his thing I'm sure if I seen it more than once I'd probably get behind it. So it's hard to critique this one in the end the um what do we got The Kadama fucking hits a killer corkscrew, spinning corkscrew off the top rope for the win, which I didn't think that was going to happen. I thought Pantera and his uh, dude there was going to pull out the victory, but they didn't. See? That's how it works out. You got the two little cocky bastards. Well, the one's really cocky with his fucking hair and his blazer. So, anyway, if I seen more of these guys, I could probably get behind it. And it, that's what it takes. And that's where this goddamn pay-per-view should have had a little more buildup, in my opinion, because I didn't know half this shit was going down. Did you? Comment below, because that's really frustrating. If you want to sell a pay-per-view, even if you want to sell next Wednesday night, let us know what the fuck the plans are, TNA. Come on. I know you're in fucking financial trouble. You're in all sorts of fucking shit. You need to let people know. And if you know you're going to have matches against people that probably your American fan base don't know shit about, fucking start doing little vignettes or something. Something. Especially some of those goddamn episodes where you had to kill fucking time and stretch shit. Definitely the end of New York City. Those were awesome. I'm not fucking saying anything about New York City's matches. I'm just saying that last episode you stretched the fuck out. You could have interjected some of this. And it really would have helped out big time. So I don't know who's running shit over there. I'm just a regular old citizen. <laughs> I could have fucking told you how to done that shit. Damn. Anyway, off the rant. Team 3D, Hall of Fame speeches. Fuck yes. They deserve it. They're in. They are Hall of Famers, fine, and 23-time tag team champions. Moving on, and I read something about um, during this pay-per-view, they're gunning for the Bullet Club, but there was nothing on the pay-per-view that I've seen about it, so I don't know if that's just whatever or they cut it. And I guess they ripped up a Bullet Club shirt, and so are they going for that, the tag team championship in New Japan Pro Wrestling, which is affiliated with Global Force Wrestling. Jeff Jarrett recruiting all these guys. I don't know. Hey, lots of stuff to think about. Comment down here. Jeff Jarrett, is he trying to take back all his old people, bringing them back to Global Force Wrestling because he's now hooked up with New Japan Pro Wrestling? 
TNA's hooked up with Wrestle One, which is a good promotion too. I mean, it's just, hey, support pro wrestling no matter the company. I don't care who it is. Support it, enjoy it, have fun with it. That's it. Then we have Tommy Dreamer and Abyss versus Team 3D. Let me tell you what, the crowd loves this shit. They were pumped. And Abyss has some fucking itch up his ass about Bully. And uh, he calls Bully in. We get the back and forth manning each other up. But, uh, and, and then we get the classic fucking chance uh, after the what's up to Tommy Dreamer and get the tables and we bring in this weird little table but man did you see how thick the wood was way thicker than an american table so very small table but thicker wood and looked a little more dangerous we get ec dub chance we get get the tables chance we get all of that which is crazy these guys they study this shit. they love it they love wrestling so really really good shit. we get the fucking Oh, Jesus Christ, the bell across the head, the nuts, all sorts of shit. We get uh, tax. Abyss brings in the tax. And then we get Dreamer. He gets powerbombed through that table. And we get the holy shit chance, which was awesome. And, oh, just insane shit. But in the end here, Tommy Dreamer eats the 3D for the victory. And then we get a 3D speech. They come out and it, basically they're just saying thank you to the live crowd. Thank you to the crowd watching on TV, uh, me including me. <laughs> they thanked me personally, yes, just like you. Anyway, they support pro wrestling and all of pro wrestling fans. That is a killer concept, correct? Yes, comment below, support pro wrestling. Then we move on to Velvet Sky versus Havoc in a very slow, boring match. Not gonna lie. And it ends with a, a bear hug from Havoc to Velvet Sky. She taps out to a bear hug. Hey, this is like 1987 all over again. Which is totally fine. Why not? Why not go back to the old school? But it was a really, really slow match and it just... I don't know. I don't think the crowd really, really gave a fuck at all. I, they were in the velvet there for a little while. But yeah, bear hug tap out. That's like full Nelson fucking, remember that shit? Half Nelson. <laughs> just, anyway, eh, didn't go over well. I don't think personally you can tell me I'm a full of shit down here if you want. It's okay. Then we have the main event, James Storm and the Great Sonata versus Tajiri and the Great Muda. And let me tell you what, the Let's Go Cowboy chance was really cool to hear while we're in Japan. The Redneck Revolution taking over worldwide. Fuck yeah! <laughs> really good shit. Great back and forth between them. We get missed every, everyone spraying Miss Butt Storm. And uh, Sonata's got blue mist. We got fucking green mist from uh, Muda, or I don't even know. There, there were so many colors coming out of everyone. It's crazy. Mist everywhere. But, <coughs> but the uh, the great Muda in the end hits the shining wizard, his creation. Just yeah, that that's how smooth it was. It was so good. It was so good, and he does it to Sonata. So it was very very capitalizing and uh, picks up the win win here while storm is outside of the ring I thought Tajiri was gonna turn because of James Storm's little promo pre before this match there's room for one more I thought for sure Tajiri was gonna turn but he didn't he fought strong with the great Muda and um, it was good but in the end here James Storm's a little ticked off calls in manic and uh, we go for the beatdown to the great Muda and Tajiri. But Team 3D is not having it. And they come out and take care of business. Bully Ray and fucking goddamn Devon are running it. And that's a great way to end the show. Bully Ray, Devon, standing tall with the great Muda in Japan. Fuck yeah, you can't go wrong there, guys. So, decent pay-per-view. Um, if they promoted more, 
I mean, they had a ton of promotion, but really nothing behind it with the matches and shit. They could have done more with the goddamn people that some of us don't know. Not all of us know everything about Japanese wrestling. There's some great wrestling over there. I have watched some. <laughs> like Prince Devitt. And that, yeah, I got into that shit big time there for a little while. But, yeah, something I don't watch every goddamn week. And so I don't even know some of these people. The dude with the blazer and the hair. Pfft, couldn't have told you who the fuck that was. Still can't right now. But... I do know about a blazer in his hair. So anyway, the thing is, all they had to do was promote a little more with the matches. That's all. And uh, decent, uh, great wrestling. You can't go wrong there. And uh, the, sh the crowd, it is different. Like Taz was saying in the beginning, they cheered for the spots, but then they instantly silent. So it made it sound like a goddamn high school. In my opinion, eh, whatever, but that's the respectful way in Japan. Something totally different, and I'm glad Taz explained it in the beginning. Good for him. And <laughs> I liked his little uh, little shot at the WWE. He can multitask. Good for you, Taz. Awesome shit. So in the end, go to sonsofwrestling.com. Check out some of these cool-ass t-shirts and hoodies or the videos. Whatever you want to do and support pro wrestling. And let's look forward to the next Impact Wrestling on Wednesday because... Who is joining EC3? And will he stay undefeated in year two? Who knows? All good shit, and I will catch you guys next time. Peace.